The following is a presentation of the Force Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy, this is Force Center Meets. I'm Kat Napsok with Joseph Scrimshaw and Jennifer Landa for the first edition of a sit-down interview for video, for audio, and our special guest, because you can see him now, it's Jamie Stangroom. Yay! Hello. <laughs> How are you, sir? Not bad, thank you. How are you all? We are great. We're, we're, on a, we're on a couch together. <laughs> yes. How could anything be wrong? <laughs> this is yeah, the internet personified. A couch, some mics, cameras and lights, and a, a wonderful guest. This is what we're doing this here. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much for your yeah. kind words and your couch. It's, it's a pretty comfortable couch. It's a oh, good yeah, it's a- Ikea couch, Joseph. Oh, yeah. I know uh, these uh, are in most homes in Los Angeles, this relatively cheap leather (laughs) Ikea couch. (laughs) You walk through and you go, that one looks like it will fit into my life and budget. Mm -hmm. So here's the point of what we're doing here. We in Force Center love to talk about news. We love to talk about Star Wars. Uh, That's why you're here. But we love diving in deep. But also we wanted to sit down with some of the people that we know in this business uh, who are Star Wars fans who do great things and spend some time with them, like like 30 minutes on a couch, like we're in a waiting room almost here. Uh, and uh, Jamie, uh, we became friends uh, online. I was following your stuff. You have some great interviews on your YouTube channel, which we're going to talk about. You, you found some some older Star Wars actors, forgotten Star Wars actors, and some big legends as well. And you also have a great documentary kind of project. I guess I'll call it a documentary, but we'll let you explain more a little bit later. Called uh, Empire Strikes Door. It's also uh, got a ga- great uh, com- uh, comedic presence uh, uh, presentation to it. Um, but you and I kind of connected just over mutual, like, hey, I like what you do. I like what you do. You're over here in the States, and I, f- I really wanted to sit down and talk with you, man. So good to have you here. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. In a whirlwind, <laughs> in a whirlwind of uh, cyberness and now real yeah. world. Real world. Like, yeah. you're a real person, I'm a real we person. We just had to prove ourselves to each other, didn't we, really? Yeah. That we do exist. Yeah. We had to, like, <laughs> size each other up. I yeah. do feel like there should be a greeting in culture for we have been friends on the internet, but this is the first time we're meeting where we can see <laughs> your whole body, not just yeah. a little circle of your head. Right. Like, there should be a special handshake. Like, I think we should, like, just reach out and touch fingers. Just like, <laughs> just we're we're real. We're real. Let's do it. Man. We <laughs> <laughs> We're like Ray and Kylo. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. So, Jamie, when did you uh, start really deciding to cover Star Wars on your YouTube channel? You've done a lot of stuff over there in the UK, BBC, your reporter, radio, all that kind of cool stuff. But when did you decide to focus on Star Wars? I mean, I've always been a Star Wars fan and I feel like I genuinely have always been a Star Wars fan because as a kid you know even before I knew what Star Wars was I had the toys because I've got a brother uh, now in his early 40s so he had all the toys and it was always on in the background and what have you so it's always been before even knowing what it actually was it's always been part of me I guess Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then uh, I, I, I had a sort of I guess a pretty normal upbringing I went to school and eventually I left uh, my little city and I went to London for university and then got into broadcasting and radio radio is my thing that's what yeah. I'm, I'm most uh, passionate about in terms of broadcasting and obviously that with the emergence of, uh, of YouTube radios kind of slowly become if not becoming uh, if not become television it's all the same now isn't it yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, so the Star Wars thing kind of fitted into it all when I realized that not everybody in the world of uh, commissioning, is as interested in Star Wars as I am. Uh, <laughs> I, you couldn't get anything commissioned, so I'll just go and do it myself. Right. And um, that's mm. really where the Star Wars uh, channel, the YouTube channel started. I yeah. mean, I call it a Star Wars YouTube channel because at the moment it is most 99% the- Star Wars right, right. content. But I mean, the plan is to sort of branch out in terms of uh, pop culture. But mm. yeah, it was it was Star Wars. Uh, it was specifically for Star Wars uh, that I started doing it and because yeah, nobody wanted it. And and the big draw for what you do is you you go out and find some of these we, we say forgotten Star Wars actors. But again, you you've sat down with Billy D. Williams, not forgotten in the least bit. Uh, when did you decide to do that? Did it just I stumbled onto something and then it went from there? Yeah. The, well, the trigger for that was the Force Awakens. It was that picture that was released for the first time when we saw the gang back together. You know, at Pinewood mm. Studios. Oh, the the Lost reading the of the actors. script. Yeah, that photo. Yeah, that was the inspiration because it was, it was right. great to see the new faces there along with uh, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, etc. But you know, where's where's a gonk droid when you need one? Where's, <laughs> yeah. where's low Brady Ewok? Where's, uh, where's, where's Greedo? This is all well and good, guys. 
Uh, so I decided to go out and find the aforementioned people and, and more and um, catch up with them. Because the good thing for me was um, that they're all mostly based in the UK. Uh, mm, yeah. And therefore, it was fairly easy to find them. Not all, but, yeah. but most of them. And I would do an interview with them, um, try and keep it light, uh, but occasionally it got a little bit... Um, you know, deep. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I think you know which one I'm referring to there. And then I'd make like a, an audition tape with them, a very tongue in cheek audition tape with them to try and show uh, Disney what they're missing out on and maybe get them back in a future <laughs> film, which you could say has worked because, of course, Billy yeah. D did take part and right. is now back, isn't he? Yes, you did it. You, you brought Lando so, back. Um, I can't oh, reveal the you. exact commission figure I'm, I'm on for that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Now, when you're interviewing them, do you find that um, I saw the documentary uh, Elstree 76, is it? Yeah. Uh, that really highlighted not, not only uh, the experience of being one of these kind of smaller characters, but that there is this level of competition in the autograph market mm. where your your status depends like how much you were featured in the film depends on how much you were in the movie. Mm. And that, that documentary brought out how some of the, the actors kind of had little rivalries of like, I don't like this guy who claims he was in this corner of this <laughs> shot because he's, you know, look, look Greedo, Greedo, that, that's big money. But this guy's trying to hit, you know, like <laughs> how much do you find that there is that whole story with them of uh, competition or need for identity? Yeah, I've, I've come across this a lot. And... Don't get me wrong, I would love to have uh, Mark Hamill on, on the channel at some point, but I'm more interested, in, the niche of the better yeah. in my book. And I have found this everywhere I've gone because, of course, there are, there's more than one Ewok. You know, what, and it wasn't just Warwick Davis, but he's like, you know, king of Ewoks. But yeah. <laughs> um, there was more than one Stormtrooper. You know, it's a Stormtrooper rivalry uh, yeah. I've come across. Um, uh, but the one that I love the most is the medal bearer at the end of A New Hope and in the throne room. See, Nick Joseph. Wow. Right. So he is probably, there's a website, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but if you, if you uh, Google or use your search engine of choice, Star Wars actors' appearances, there's a, what, someone's got a website where all the conventions in the world have been put in one place, so you've got Billy Dee Williams and you'll see exactly where he's going to be for this. For oh, this, cool. This yeah. Time, yeah. And Nick Joseph, medal bearer, <laughs> is the busiest Star Wars actor in the world. Like, he is just <laughs> living the dream. He's like in his, um, I guess he's in his 60s, maybe even touching uh, 70. And he's just traveling the world, you know, best retirement ever. And he's just stood there holding a medal in a box, you know. And, and he knows that. He yeah. knows that. Uh, he was very good at it. You know, I'm surprised the Olympics <laughs> never sort of jumped yeah. him on. Yeah. It was real life medal bearing. But what I love about him, I met him for the first time. Um, I don't go to too many um, conventions just mm. because they're too busy for me. They're too busy. I can't yeah. handle it. I can't handle it. Oh, just the, the volume it's, of people? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. Can't handle it. Like this couch and, times a million. Even yeah. I'm British. I, I, I mean, I will queue. I will queue because, yeah. you know, it's, it's that's, that's like our religion. Do. But I don't like <laughs> it still. You know, I don't want to queue all day. Yeah. Right. yeah. So I don't go to that many. But I went to one in my home city of uh, Coventry, which is just famous again, bombed loads in World War Two, And uh, also <laughs> two-ton scar music, if you like the specials. Yeah, yes. oh, I do. Yes. From uh, mm-hmm. Coventry, that's about it, though. Um, they had a convention because now I'm sure it's the same in the states. There are conventions every, yeah. every yes. weekend, particularly in the summer, and they had one in Coventry, so it was a good chance to go and see my mum, get my washing done, go to a convention, <laughs> do some interviews. And Nick Joseph was there, the medal bearer, and um, I, I'd always, always been in the back of my mind as someone I've got to get. I've yeah. Got to get. But he's too busy. So. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's the, the metal world, bearer. Metals, yeah. He's the metal bearer. And uh, I, I finally got him, and he's hilarious. I haven't put the interview out yet, but I have actually pretty much edited it. So uh, next couple of weeks, I'll have it out there. Uh, he was hilarious, and and he's completely aware of how small his role is because you get some who who don't cast themselves as extras. They went to acting school, you know, and yeah, they right, are right. a little bit bitter almost that they're remembered. I mean, some have a great uh, sense of humor over it. Paul Blake, who's Greedo, he did like BBC radio dramas. He did, you know, a lot of theater. Uh, Same as Jeremy Bullock, Boba Fett. Yeah. They they were proper, you know, proper. A lot of them are in Doctor Who, yeah. Yeah, but will only ever be remembered, you know, as Greedo or Boba Fett. And those two, cool with it. Absolutely love it. But you do meet some who are a little bit more. But going back, sorry, going back to the medal bearer, Nick Joseph. So he was, um, well, I was doing a chat with him. And it, was, it was fun. He had he actually brings a replica medal with him to the, <laughs> everywhere he goes in life, but also to conventions, yeah, but especially conventions. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and he's got the original hat as well. I don't know how he stole it from. He hat, had vision to say like, yeah. "I'm going to be able to live off of this. Yeah. I'm going to steal, steal this." Yeah. And you and was chatting away, 
And I, I, it just popped into my head that I'm also randomly friends with another metal bearer from A New Hope on, uh, on Facebook uh, called Derek Lyons. And he's definitely not going to appreciate me saying this, but I'm saying it. Yeah. I'm saying it. You've got yeah. the exclusive here. And um, I was like, hang on, how can they have two metal bearers? Because it was such a short moment. You don't, yeah. need, you right. know, you don't need a metal bearing stunt double, do you? Like, that's, <laughs> you know, my wrists are tired. Um, yeah. So I was like, um, uh, Nick, um, so what part did Derek Lyons um, have to do with this? Because you're both claiming to be the metal, metal bearer. bearer, but there's only one metal bearer. And, and he said, well, actually, if you do look carefully, you'll see in two different shots that with, with two different people, they did actually, for whatever reason, have two metal bearers. <laughs> but it's, but it's I don't supposed know to be the one? one? Um, but uh, he, it turns out, I was like, okay, because I, yeah, I sort of know Derek a little bit. And uh, he's like, oh, okay, yeah, Derek, does, Derek doesn't want to come out to play with me. I mean, what, what do you mean? Like, yeah. what, what are we talking here? He goes, oh, he won't come to a convention I'm at. Really? Wow. Whoa. So there is proper metal bearing beef out there. (laughs) Metal bearing (laughs) beef. It's like, I'm the metal bearer. If you want a metal bearer, it's me. Yeah. Or you're not getting it. Right. And Nick doesn't mind. He he says, it it just reminds me of the Anthony Daniels and Kenny Baker thing. Right. Mm. Um, Deep-seated feud. Yeah. He he would happily, um, you know, go to a convention with the other metal bearer, Derek. But... No, Derek won't, won't Derek have it. Won't so, do it. <laughs> yeah, Derek even, won't you know, the, the, my mutest of uh, moments in, in the film there, yeah. is there's still rivalry and um, almost That's... bitterness. It's strange that just because he didn't get the whole role to himself and he's, I don't know. <laughs> and then technically when there's an action figure, because weirdly there is an action figure for the least action role. Right. Of, yeah, of, oh yeah. Metal yeah. Bearer. Um, it, there, there's only one, of course. They don't have uh, two faces, so I guess... Right. Derek doesn't like the idea that that's the technically not just his face. <laughs> right. That would be amazing if they made an exclusive that came like a six-inch black, black series, series where you could switch out the head for which oh metal bearer you want to have I an action figure I think we've just put that out in the universe and this will happen. <laughs> I like now, it. JB, your videos come from a humorous point of view, but a lot of love for Star Wars and a lot of love for the content. I know, Jennifer, you've done a lot of YouTube videos that you know you have some subjects are sitting down with people and you're coming from a point of love and humor, mm-hmm. but maybe it doesn't go right if you know right that's what i was thinking is that when you approach these people and you say hey i want to interview them are they are they generally touched and then what do you say to convince them to participate in these you know funny moments or bits at the end like jeremy bullock or femi taylor yeah um i guess there's a combination of getting their permission and also just springing it on them at the last right. moment it's too late to, <laughs> to, back, to out. back out um, I'm trying to think back now with the Star Wars. I mean, part of my uh, radio job before I started doing this was I was completely on my own. It was a it was a BBC national radio station, but it was radio. There was like no budget, so I was sort of left on my own doing a late night thing, and uh, I had to learn to how to approach publicists and mm. bloggers and mm-hmm. agents and what have you, and ended up building a t- contact spot. But actually, it was mostly in the music and comedy world. Um, so I was sort of starting again with the uh, Star Wars convention actors uh, mm. world that still used, I guess, the same approach, but equally. Do you know what? I probably also played the card that, by the way, this is not for the BBC, but I do do interviews for the BBC, so maybe you'll get a good interview out of me. Maybe you won't, but yeah. <laughs> it's, worth, it's worth, worth, worth a go, yeah? Yeah. Right. And... I, you know, I don't know why anybody said yes. I really don't, because the channel was new. There was no subscribers. There's still right. only a few subscribers now. Um, I, I don't really know. Um, but now there's a portfolio. So, you know, I can say to a uh, future metal bearer from episode nine, should a <laughs> spoiler alert, um, that we've, we've had Billy D. Williams on, we've had uh, Frank Oz on, you know, and, mm. uh, as well as people you know from the convention circuit. And, and also the nice thing I think people realise as well, some of these guys that are not going to um, uh, maybe uh, get like a, an hour's dedication to them on a BBC programme or, or AMC or CNN or whatever. Right, right. I think this is their moment. They, this mm-hmm. is their chance to come on shows like mine and yours to sort of tell their story and sort of yeah. cement their legacy. I think some of them genuinely get that, you know, that, it is their chance, you know, and they do. A lot of them, I'm sure you found as well, aren't necessarily Star Wars fans, you know, and they can't mm. believe that they're still talking about it and making money out of it in some <laughs> cases 40 odd years later. But they get it and they they get, I think a lot of them get the internet now. They're all on Facebook and are friends with thousands of people around the world they've never met right. before. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, I mean, I have. I'm trying to think who reject who's rejected me so far. I have definitely been rejected. Yeah. You have. Uh, I'll definitely in, in person oh, yeah. or from. Uh, <laughs> no, I, that that sounded like I meant a dating thing. I did not. I mean, like, oh, have you walked uh, up to somebody and how long like, you got for the dating? <laughs> <laughs> Separate podcast that rejection list. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Because you've got, I mean, a wide variety of subjects. I, I would yes. think that so many of these smaller actors, and again, this is a little bit from seeing that L Street documentary, they are aware, I think there's a little bit of a sort of a proper work ethic of, this is a way that I can make money. Mm-hmm. I might not care about this film, but fans really, right. really care about this film. And doing an interview is only going to highlight exactly. and advertise a way exactly. that they can make money. So I'm, I'm interested why somebody who would be like, yeah, I was the stand-in for Pone de Baba, and I want to make money. No way I'm talking to this guy. Like, <laughs> why would you draw that line? Yeah, yeah. Um, on the Baba, he's got he's got a line, man. <laughs> got a oh, line. I guess it's because he doesn't like you, right? <laughs> he uh, like yeah, you. and of course, um, who's who's the Doctor Bonda's Ponda's mate, Doctor Doctor uh, Everson. Everson. Yeah, he died recently. The oh actor. no, yeah. And there's no interviews with him. Mm. I mean, he was an extra um, as, as a he was a, a jobbing extra. Mm. There are no interviews with him. Wow. Because of course, we weren't doing this 30 years ago, were we? Yeah. But right. now, with the the extras supporting roles in the newer films, we are doing this now. So, you, it, it, but it's just a shame that there's nothing from that actor who apparently was a right character as well. Oh mm-hmm. no! Yeah, what I've read in the tributes to him uh, when he when he passed away, um, it, it's just a shame. So I think, I think from that point of view, from a morbid point of view, some of the some of the guys are thinking this is, like I said before, my last chance to sort of yeah, tell right. my story. And I'm, I think the one I'm most proud of or not maybe not most proud of in terms of uh, the quality of the interview necessarily but in terms of proving that this is worthwhile is uh i spoke to um eric bausfeld who was the voice of admiral akbar right. and oh, he did yes. die right. shortly after yeah um so it was i think his last interview to be honest last of two interviews that yeah, he did crazy. You know? amazing. um so that's that was yeah that kind of made it feel like this is worthwhile and you know this is going to be there forever mm-hmm. yeah this you know yeah I, I think that's what's valuable we talked about this before but like we we mentioned Boshek one of your favorite characters yeah jokes. one of my favorite side characters yeah turns down Obi-Wan goes and there's no record of who that actor was it was different time and so yeah what you're doing here it's like you are kind of doing a uh, research as well historical Star Wars research yeah I'm putting a name to some of it do have to do some research some actual work I can't just turn the camera on and talk <laughs> that's, that's the disappointing element to it all but um, yeah it's, it's true it's true and um I'm trying to think has anyone else died that I've interviewed on that <laughs> have, not do, yet do not you yet, lead with that at this point where you're like I I know human lifespans are only so long and I would like to record your legacy. <laughs> yeah. would, would you start approaching people that way or is that too I, I morbid? That's my new experimental approach uh, after, <laughs> after this, for whoever's next. What I loved was one of my favorite interviews that you did was Ahmed Best, yeah. the Jar Jar interview. To me, it was the first time where we really, I really felt like we had heard his side of the story and it just was so touching. It actually made me love the character of Jar Jar mm-hmm. more. Did you kind of approach that from that perspective of you wanted to get his side of the story, you wanted to kind of redeem the character, or were you just wanting to talk to him? Yeah, I come towards Jar Jar, I guess, from an indifferent place. Um, I wasn't I wasn't young enough to love Jar Jar when The Phantom Menace came out, but equally I wasn't old enough to hate him. <laughs> so yeah. I've always been indifferent to the character. Uh, I, I don't really like The Phantom Menace. I think it's the weakest of all the Star Wars films, in my, in my opinion. Um, but I don't hate it. It's, it's a film. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so y- yes and no. Yes and no. Um, I guess about sounding all um, fancy pants because because I'm not. Um, I guess from a journalist point of view, it's it's the most interesting mm. yeah. person to speak to because there's not much evidence of him speaking about it out there. You know, right. he really hadn't done apart from the interviews he had to do. Obviously during the promotional um, cycle of of the Phantom Menace, there's no kind of like looking back, this is, you know, it's let it all out. Um, yeah. Mm. Kind of uh, vibe from him. And as Ken knows, I don't really know why he spoke to me. I tweeted him and we ended up, you know, in the, in the yeah. DMs and it kind of went from there and we did it on Skype. And then we did a follow up because uh, my, and my, my few subscribers know this, my productivity is not, is not particularly high on the channel. <laughs> I record something and like that Coventry comic con I mentioned. Yeah. That was last Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the Metal Bear interview out at some point, hopefully. Um, not the this, fastest editor. In this year so, yeah, that's yeah. come after yeah. that Comic Con. Yep. Um, 
So with the Ahmed one, it came out a long time after I recorded it, and the Darth Jar Jar theory had come out by the time my interview uh, came out, of course. Oh, Why I would I think of something like that, you know? Right, right, so right. we didn't talk about it. And... I got a lot of comments from people asking, whoa, come on, man, why didn't you ask him about Darth Jar Jar? What's <laughs> yeah. wrong with you? You're letting us How down. How dare man. you, yeah, sir? <laughs> I let the whole entire, well, not the entire, but anyway, I let a massive portion down of the Star Wars fandom, it <laughs> seems, by not asking that one crucial question that, again, why would that even exist why in anyone's up? mind at that point? And uh, I reached out to Ahmed for a follow-up because it did get a good response. And I think, um, like, like you said, people did warm towards certainly him and, mm-hmm. and even the character more, more after that. Uh, after hearing his story. So we did a follow-up, a Darth Jar Jar one. And, um, also, I should say, every interview I've done with him since the original. And yeah. it's been You've done three, three now, right? Yeah. yeah. We chat for hours, and I, now I've just started putting, like, 50-minute versions out. Um, we chat about everything he does, because he's such a talented guy. Mm. He's a musician. Um, he's a writer. Uh, he's an actor, of course, yeah. as well. And um, he's now... Do you know what? I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. I'm going to meet him after this. <gasps> Wow. Ah. For the first time in person. Really? Oh, 2 wow. p.m. Wow. Los Feliz? Los Feliz? Yeah, Los yeah. Feliz. Yeah. Yeah. Los yeah. Feliz. We are meeting for the first time. So I will do the finger touch oh. with him. Yes, please. Well. Yes, Transfer those long, We've been like cyber pen fingers. pals for like that, That's now. great. Amazing. The time Just the sentence, I'm going to meet Jar Jar Binks in Los Feliz, <laughs> yeah, is it's powerful. It's happening. But we're not yeah. recording anything. Yeah. We're not recording anything. Uh, we're just going to hang out, have a coffee or beer or something. That's, that's um, great. That's great. Yeah. We're not going to follow you at all. No. no, can no there will be no uh, secret paparazzi photos. <laughs> <laughs> Moving hedges. In, a, in, <laughs> in the times that you've talked to him, and that, what I think, what Jen, what you're saying about the interviews, uh, especially the last one for me is my favorite because he reads the Chuck Wendig aftermath interlude in George's voice. You get a sense that even though he... He's proud of what he's done. He's maybe hurt, and we, he now admitted some dark stuff about that. But you get a sense that he's still he's still there for it. Am I wrong in that, Jamie? That you you know him? I think you're right. You're pen palling him. Yeah. Well, real. He's gonna be a real life friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you're absolutely right because I'm trying to think back again uh, to the approach. Um, mm. I imagine it wasn't particularly easy. It wasn't like, sure, I'll do it. I, I must have had to sort of yeah. convince him somehow. God knows what I offered. I promised him the world. He's going to be expecting it now in Lost Feliz. <laughs> 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 Jamie, my feet. Um, so, yeah, he's... The first time I interviewed him, because it was part of the original series, I was doing yeah. the, the audition tapes for these oh, are the actors okay, you're yeah, looking yeah. for. And uh, I gave him the... There's only so much we could do over Skype. So I gave him the... Um, I didn't tell him about this in advance. I gave him the Liam Neeson um, famous Taken. Oh, monologue. yeah, the phone oh, call. Yeah. And asked him to do it in the voice of Jar Jar. And he thought it was funny, and he did it. And it, and it, yeah. was, it was fun. And then second time round, he did the... He loves the Darth Jar Jar theory, by the way. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he yeah, He yeah. really That's enjoys great. it. Um, and he feels like there is some truth to it because he was supposed to have a bigger role, of course, in Attack of the Clones. And then mm. the backlash... Uh, Changed that, and he did film more scenes than we saw, including one, and I believe this is pretty common knowledge, where he's walking down a corridor. It's a dark scene with uh, Palpatine, and Palpatine's kind of thanking him for his support. And <laughs> so he's, he's he said the potential for Jar Jar to, you know, not necessarily be a Sith Lord, but to yeah. to, to become a bad guy was yeah. was there. You know, it was in it was in motion uh, almost. So he likes that theory, and he you know. And he kind of likes the new lease of life in a way it's given. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. At least on the, in- the character, at least on the internet. So he read some standard kind of Sith Lord lines in a voice that he would have <laughs> done I, for Darth Jar I see you becoming the most powerful Gungan. Yeah. <laughs> but he loves that. Gonna and, reveal and, well, he, he dropped, um, I'll have to, it's online, but he did two versions. One where he dropped the kind of uses and Mises because he felt maybe that was an act. Oh, was yeah. Acting oh. A fool. Oh, nice. But behind the meters and uses, he's actually this very sort of clever, you know, puppet uh, master like Palpatine. Ooh, you know, that's characters. beautiful. So he did two versions. One, as we would expect, with the Mies uh, and then without. Without. Um, and then third, yeah, with the Chuck Wendig. Uh, line. Yeah. And he, and he really enjoyed that as well. And he's always said to me he'd never come back to Star Wars. Mm. He still says that in all three interviews. I've asked him once again, you know, because yeah. he's seeing you know, a lot of love for, for the character now. 20 years on, yeah, the, the anniversary is this year. Yeah. yeah. I keep saying, we're coming up. Back, yeah. And he keeps saying, no. I'm happy with my part in the Star Wars. And he was a fan as well before you know, yeah. getting involved. Um, I I don't believe him. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like he's definitely warming. He feels the warmth coming towards him and he's warming back, right back at you. Yeah. Um, I, I've got a feeling 
I don't think we've seen The Last of Ahmed Best in Star Wars, whether it be voicing a character. I would love him to play a new character. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that yeah. would be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. He's, th- he's a phenomenal actor in the, the little uh, bits that you make him do. I mean, that Brian Mills thing is a is a cold read. That Taken thing, just as a cold read, yeah. is great. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and what he did with the, the Chuck Wendig, which I, I love Wendig's little intro there, really, really makes you think about Jar Jar and makes you feel sad and sorry of what happened to Jar Jar and then you apply it to the real world. I thought he brought something to it there. I would love to see him do yeah, that. Yeah, and, and that was cold too. Like, um, yeah. I when I messaged him yesterday just to sort of uh, organize today, the last <laughs> the last text message I'd sent to him was the copy and paste of Chuck Wendig's words. Yeah. So I was like, ah, what, 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 hey, this is, you know, oh, yeah, it was that. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jar-Jar awesome. on at the fountain or something. Um, a, f- yeah. a few minutes left here. I do want to talk about some other stuff, but you, 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 and we got some questions for you uh, uh, some more but uh, Billy D you sat down with Billy D Williams and uh, I mean Billy D's Billy D he's cool he's calm he's collected and I, I was watching the interview again this morning where were how, were you were you afraid that that one could go wrong yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah um it was potentially it probably was one of the most awkward ones I've yeah. done actually he was I think he had a few moments of, why am I doing this? Like, <laughs> why, why? But then... I'm uh, Lando. There's a green screen, because I got him, in, we got him in front of the green screen, and um, for his audition, he was, uh, it was like, name a star, you know, name, you know those name a star things, which are ridiculous, because, yeah, yeah. you know, you can't even have a star forever, let alone really have it as your own. Yeah. Uh, he had a name a cloud uh, for this, um, <laughs> business that, he, that he'd moved on to, and he did it, and you know what, like, gave him the lines, he... Did just it? turned it on. He was brilliant. Yeah. But there was a few moments during the interview where I think he was a bit like, why? why am I, Who are why you? Am I, <laughs> right. <laughs> why? What? How? Where's my agent? Um, but to be honest, it was fine. It wasn't the most awkward. The most awkward was uh, Dave Prowse, the body of Darth Vader. Oh, yeah. 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 Not his fault. He's, he's not He's not R- well. He's, um, yeah. He suffers from dementia. So I was mm. sat um, in South London, an area called Croydon, um, in his garden shed. Uh, which Croydon's very own Death Star, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, it, it was there was a few moments where it was like, I'm not even sure we should, mm. should be doing, should we doing it. Mm. Um, but the edit was fine. The edit was yeah. absolutely fine. And he's actually retired from the convention circuit. Now. Okay. Okay. Just can't yeah. anymore. Yeah. yeah, his story, that 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 documentary uh, with I, I, I Am Father is, is heartbreaking, but also a great watch about Prowse. And great that they did that with him while they could. Yeah. You know, that was a, they had that, to do that now, yeah. in that moment. Mm. Okay, okay. Uh, we got some questions for you here, right? We're yeah. going to wrap this up with some fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. I love how you uh, you obviously have a lot of reverence for Star Wars, but you also have a lot of playfulness towards it and the nostalgia. What are some of your comedic uh, inspirations? What did you grow up watching or were inspired by? Yeah, um, I was never into stand-up comedy so much. Mm. Um, I think I've probably only been to maybe 10 stand-up shows in my life. But I grew up watching... I mean, we get a lot of American television uh, in the UK, so a lot of American comedies, but I was never into, like, Friends or anything. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> no sitcom <laughs> stuff, yeah. But I guess also the classics, like yeah. Faulty Towers and Monty yeah. Python mm-hmm. and right. what have you. Um, I also... And these, these, these didn't cross over here because they're more sort of local... Uh, satire news uh, comedies things like brass eye in the uk and mm. the in the day to day um which um actually um oh names left me how's the name left me um mm. anyway we'll move on because the name's <laughs> not going to come back to me <laughs> in time um but you would know him because he's he's sort of crossed over but yeah they were sort of you know, I would be a British office guy over the American office. Yeah. And that's not a patriotic, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. oh, Britannia. That's like, I just prefer that style. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. me as well, yeah. The Ricky Gervais style. Yeah. Um, so they were my influences, uh, really, um, stand-up comedy-wise. I, I don't have many. Um, yeah. But that is clear, the kind of mockumentary style, yeah. a yeah. little bit yeah. in your in your videos, which yeah. makes it so fun. But then you also clearly have a love for Star Wars. and so. Oh, absolutely. No, it's... Yeah. it's like Star Wars and football, and I'm talking about round. Football. Yeah, <laughs> not all that's, that's that's it. You know, yeah. my family, friends, <laughs> family, friends are <laughs> the point. Tick boxes, don't they? But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I absolutely love Star Wars, and the kind of mockumentary style of comedy is certainly something that I've always enjoyed uh, consuming, and is something that I'm, I kind of like would want to 
to make uh, right. more of. And Brass Eye was that. It was a fake news show, basically, mm. but nice. involving love real it. life people. Uh, <laughs> oh, them. And this great. was years ago. It's like, like late 80s, early 90s. I'll okay. wait for NBC to finally adapt it <laughs> <laughs> to do over here. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I loved uh, that you asked people the weird, surprising questions. It's something that, that I like to do, and I think it, it, it seems to me like some of what your charm is in how you get extra interesting information out of people that you ask these weird questions, but in a playful way that's clearly not uh, making fun of them, but inviting them to have fun. Right. So I want to ask you a similar kind of question. So if you could have your arms replaced by the arms of any character in Star Wars, <laughs> which Star Wars character's arms would you like to have? If I went for General Grievous, I would end up with more arms than I initially had. Yeah, right. yeah, you would trade up. That'd be great. You know, I could only win out of that deal, yeah. surely. But like, I don't know. My arms, I'm not. I don't go gym much. My arms okay. aren't very strong, and like, there's hair on the the majority of the rest of my body. So why not go for Chewie's arms? Chewie's, Chewie's arms. Get some strength. And, Those are. You know, I model my appearance on a Wookiee, so it all kind of matches. It's Perfect. You know what? Is a question asker. I'll say, why don't you just combine them? You can have four Wookiee arms. Wow. 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 Wookiee octopus, that's amazing. <laughs> oh my God, Which I is, love that. Uh, the weird, ironic, uh, t- you know, with Wookiees pulling arms out of sockets. Yeah. We're going to pull them out of theirs. Oh, pulling names. Here. Steve Coogan was the name I was looking for. Oh, oh yeah. Coogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pops, <laughs> popped in your head. With we four Wookiee arms, Coogan. you could pull it out of your... Even I can remember his name, um, but yeah, once I got... You gave me the extra arms, <laughs> <laughs> that name like out, that name But out. even though I can remember his name, he was real inspiration to me of Alan Partridge and yes. the characters he's oh, played. Oh, yes. The Partridge character. Yes, absolutely. I love he and the other guy go on the road trips. I forget his name. Yeah. Uh, Rob Brydon. Rob, yes. Those ones are uh, interesting as well. Uh, final thing for me here, you one of my favorite interviews of yours, uh, and I do want to talk about Empire Strikes Doors. We we close out, but one of my fa- is, is Brian Blessed, oh, Boss yes. Nass. He seems a little touched in a good way. He is out there. How yeah. would how did that one come about? So that one came about because he was promoting a book, mm. and I got him because we were going to do a BBC interview and I said, oh, by the way, I also do these Star Wars interviews. <laughs> <laughs> could I could, maybe could bring a camera? Yeah. Had an absolute disaster. I'm not great. I come from a radio background. I'm right. not great with cameras. I'm learning as I go along. Yeah, they're, I they're around, messed it you know. up completely, <laughs> which is why you don't see me in the interview. And, yeah, you, and you only right. see him in really grainy, <laughs> you know, noisy footage. Yes. Uh, that I've just covered up as much as I can with overlaid, you know, for <laughs> stills and right. video clips. I had an absolute technical uh, mare. Uh, but, you know, some might say it's the best interview, less of Jamie. Yeah. I'm in. Um, <laughs> and he was just brilliant. And you know what? I wish the technology, uh, I wish I knew what I was doing a bit more. And I wish I had more. Do you know what? I had loads of time with him. I wish I got across more how passionate he actually is about Star Wars. Mm. He's a thespian, you know? Yes. yes. He's done Shakespeare. He's done it all. But he loves sci-fi. He wants to be like the oldest man to go to the moon. And, right. Um, and he just, his knowledge, I had to cut so much because it was, it even was, the audio was, I mean, the radio stuff was fine, but because um, we did that before. But yeah, I, there's so much that never saw the light of day. And I've had people commenting saying there was a weird cut there was it not more he said, yeah. you know, said about Sebastian Shaw are you hiding something he's like no it just it was he just it was a nightmare. wouldn't <laughs> stop talking about Sebastian Shaw <laughs> oh, he was amazing he said, yeah. Yeah. Weird yeah. but he there's so much I couldn't use in the end and I love to speak to him again or yeah. if he's ever here in the States you guys have got to try and get him because you've got to get through the agent of course but if he hears that you want to talk about Star Wars he he's will in. How long do you need? Oh <laughs> you know? my gosh. I, uh, I'm obsessed with the Boss Nass character, the voice, and, the, and, and it, it, it synced up. He was Boss Nass. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's so proud of it. And it's nice, you know, because I don't know how much he knows about the, because I doubt, you know, he doesn't use the internet. It's, it's yeah. his publicist using it for him. But, I mean, I don't know how much he knows about the backlash towards the prequels and what have you. But if he knows about it all, he doesn't care. He's so <laughs> proud of it and just awesome. so proud to be part of Star Wars. Yeah, and, um, that's great. You know, and you heard in stories, George Lucas just really wanted Brian Blessed to be part of part of that. Um, film. A Flash Gordon connection, right? So yeah. Yeah. that would make sense yeah. for George. Uh, as we close here, Jamie, you're working on something that's uh, really interesting called Empire Strikes Door, mm. which is, of course, based around who is the stormtrooper that hit his head on the door, New Hope. Who is the actor that betrays them? And as you were discussing early, the, earlier, the, the controversies and, and, and the heat among some of these performers, there's at least three who 
claim to be this stormtrooper. Yeah, so I could have brought this up earlier when you asked me about the kind of um, the beefs I've come yeah. across, uh, but I didn't want to be that guy who plugs his project within 30 <laughs> I'll seconds. I'll do it for um, you. Thank yeah. you very much, Ken. So, yeah, uh, this is probably the biggest uh, beef I've come yeah. across. Um, and there are three actors that claim to be the stormtrooper who bumped his head, of course, cinema's most uh, iconic blooper. <laughs> and uh, this was all part of the original These Are The Actors You're Looking For. I expected it to be a five or six minute YouTube video. Uh, it's for really no reason it's turned into um, <laughs> potentially 50 minute um, we're going with documentary yeah don't. Um, so yeah I'm doing it it's turned into an investigation um, three actors two have spoken to me one refused to speak to me <gasps> died a year later oh, Ooh, no. nothing to do with that <laughs> and I did polygraph tests on the two that are living uh, I went to a psychic medium to reach out to the one who died to give him a last chance to tell his story oh my gosh and uh, yeah did it <laughs> and i've spoken to gary Kurtz, the producer I've spoken to the, the clapper loader I've spoken to the second ad i've spoken to people who have nothing to do with it uh, just to get their opinions i went to the place where they made the original outfits try one on myself to get an idea of the limitations of the movement limitations. and wow. uh, vision and yeah i'm taking it quite seriously uh but you know as as always my my tongue is firmly in my in my cheek yeah. but at the yeah. same time we can't prove anything really but i've got a jury at the end who will vote based on all the <laughs> evidence that i've acquired as to who they believe is the true uh, galactic idiot and yeah it's fun and you know these guys one of them really wants it. One's dead. Uh, but one of them really wants it. You know, really, <laughs> yeah. wants, it. Face really wants it. And I'm not going to say anything about the polygraph results at the moment, but he wants it so bad. And he's been um, signing autographs. You know, he actually, his career almost, I feel bad now, his career almost depends on it because he's been signing autographs as this guy. <laughs> the yeah. other one who did the polygraph test, didn't really care. Didn't really care. You know, I was, it was me, but... Wow. <laughs> you don't have to say who, but do you have an idea of who it might actually so be? So I have to remain impartial. Yes, yeah. of course, of course. Like a good journalist. Um, yeah. I will be handing over to the jury to to, to make their, their votes. Uh, put it this way, I was really, I don't believe in polygraph results, which is why I sort of added the jury element yeah. to it. I don't believe in the tests, but still, maybe they mean something. And I was surprised by the results. <laughs> Someone okay. Felt. Someone well, I have to ask very quickly for my wife, because she brought it up when I was telling her about this. Is, do you feel, as an expert on this at this point, is it possible that both of these humans bumped their head on something during the filming of A New Hope, <laughs> I think but only one of them was captured on film? Yeah, I think I think everybody um, bumped their head at right. some point. And, um, <laughs> I, yeah, like, I realize how pointless this entire uh, thing is. Don't get me wrong. I think they all bumped their heads. So yeah. technically none of them are lying. But, of course, they <laughs> bumped their head in that... Uh, one moment uh, one of them is more truthy the thing, it's like they are like one of them is a hundred percent convinced it was this you know i've put that question to them yeah and he's you know he said look you can ask the stormtroopers at the front of the charge his name's chris bunn i spoke to chris bunn and he remembers being in the lineup with me yeah and i was what two troopers behind him you know and so <laughs> Yeah, they're they're, they're so convinced that yeah. they not only bumped their head, they bumped their head in that in that scene. in that specific mm. scene and with the polygraph test as well. They had the picture of the bump, you know, and they, <laughs> they make you lie on purpose to sort of calibrate your yeah your, your, your yeah actions that. or something. And um, yeah, it was very specific to that Amazing. scene. Amazing. Yeah, wow. they all bumped their heads. I did tweet Mark Hamill about it, and you know how great he is yeah. on Twitter. He replied yeah. and said, "I can't help you. I was too busy bumping my head on a different stage." <laughs> <laughs> um, Sounds about right. Hashtag this, what's, what's the line? This uh, costume's too small for me or something like that. Oh, yeah. Um, but, Uniform's too small. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. I love it. Uh, uh, well, we'll be looking forward to that definitely. coming out soon. We really enjoy sitting down with you here for the first edition of Four Center Meets. I, I do want you to unabashedly uh, sell everyone on what you do and tell them where they can find all this and your channel and, and follow you. Yeah, everything's just... It's all about me. It's just Jamie Stangroom, uh, S T A N G R O O M for mother. And it's the same for Twitter, Instagram, uh, and YouTube as Excellent. well. And yeah, uh, bear with me, but once every sort of year, I'll put a video <laughs> up. <laughs> You'll get it there. You'll get it there. <laughs> well, pleasure having you in. Uh, first guest here officially on Four Center Thank Meets. Uh, Joseph Jennifer, we're going to be doing this uh, when we can, we can, when we can all squeeze into the couch yeah. with yes. special guests. So uh, we'll look forward to, hopefully you guys look forward to having more of that. As always, you can follow us on Force Center Pod on Twitter, uh, forcecenterpod.podomatic.net, Instagram, Force Center Pod. And uh, Joseph, we got uh, our stuff cooking over on Patreon. That's right. You can go to patreon.com slash Force Center. We are always building to new and hopefully even more exciting goals every time. So go check that out. 
Absolutely. And Jennifer, uh, you know, you got stuff still going strong on YouTube too. let them know where they can find your stuff. Yeah, you can find me here on YouTube, youtube.com slash Jennifer Landa. And of course, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, IGTV at Jennifer Landa. And Joseph, your stuff as well. Yeah, that's right. I'm on Twitter and Instagram and other social media. You can try. Uh, I'm at Joseph Scrimshaw. That is my name. And you can check out my website at josephscrimshaw.com. Follow me at Ken Knapsack. We were shooting most of this on the Mevo, so it's like its own little droid. It moves around and does some weird things. <laughs> I've been trying to control it as best I can. Sometimes I'll get weird shots of just me nodding my head <laughs> while the people talk. That is it. We'll see you next time here on Four Center Nights. <laughs> <laughs>